Um, when I came to the Balance View training, I had, I, I, I guess I'd really learned how to be a victim to everything that was going on. And practically what that meant was that um, I, I blamed everyone and everything and myself for everything that was going on. I blamed um, myself for the way that I thought and the things that I felt and uh, the things that I said and the things that I did and didn't do. And I had a whole list of people and places and organizations that I blamed for the state of the world. Um, and that ranged from corporations to governments to different groups in society to maybe some religious groups as well. Um, basically, I lived a, a life of blame and victimhood where I continually made myself a victim by blaming everyone and everything for what was going on. And that blame really did start with myself. You know, I had a sense that everything that I felt was a sign of there being something wrong with me, particularly the, the negative experiences, the negative thoughts and emotions, sadness and um, irritation and pointlessness, hopelessness, boredom. All of these things seemed to be really signs that there was something fundamentally wrong with me. And so to be introduced to open intelligence, to see that there is something about me that is absolutely constant, totally reliable, always stable, naturally present, and whenever I recognize it, whenever I acknowledge its presence, there is immediate benefit. And this, for me, was the most profound piece of information that I'd ever come across. Because in this simple recognition of what was constant, what was reliable, in my own experience, I discovered that this life of victimhood and blame was a choice that I had. And it wasn't something that I was aware I had a choice about until I, was recogn until I recognized this stable, open intelligence that was the basis of every single experience I'd ever had. Every thought I ever had, every emotion, every physical sensation, and to begin to identify this open intelligence as being the only thing that I could absolutely and always rely on gave a completely different perspective on everything. I began to see that I didn't need to give myself a hard time for my unpredictable thoughts, my out of control emotions, the strange sensations in my body. I could gently and gradually allow everything to be just as it was. And in that was this huge shift, the shift from blaming myself because I couldn't manage everything. I couldn't manage my own thoughts and emotions. I couldn't make myself a nice person. I couldn't manufacture this nice identity where I only had positive thoughts about myself and I always really liked other people. It, it, I tried hard. I worked hard at it. I worked really hard at it. and. Ultimately, it was a complete failure because no matter how hard I worked, I'd still get angry. I'd still wake up feeling like everything was pointless. I'd still get lonely, even when I was with lots of people. And because I felt hopeless and helpless about my own situation, then that seemed to me to be the, the nature of the world as well. If I was completely um, flawed, if I was completely wrong, then it was obvious that that was the case for everybody and everything. And so whose fault was that? Who could I blame? And if you look online, there are thousands, if not millions of people working out who to blame. Whose fault is it? Which conspiracy theory is the one that we're going to go with? And I began to see that in taking short moments of recognizing open intelligence, the open intelligence that's looking through your eyes right now and short moments of allowing myself to be exactly as I was, allowing the, the stream of data just to be as it was, that I gave up the right to be a victim to anything that I was thinking, feeling or sensing. And so this was the shift. The data 
and that's a term that we can just use to describe anything that we can perceive or experience, any thought, emotion or sensation, it's just data streaming. Streaming in open intelligence, the dynamic energy of open intelligence, like, um, like the breeze is the air streaming, and we can't separate out the breeze from the air. The breeze is the dynamic energy of the air. So the data are the dynamic energy of open intelligence. We can't take the data out from open intelligence. You can't take um, a reflection in a mirror out from the mirror. And this is exactly the same relationship that open intelligence has to its data, that you have to your experience. And as I began to allow it to be as it was, and I gave up this this whole painful and disempowering game of working out who was to blame for what I was thinking, feeling and sensing, who was to blame for the state of the world, I began to empower myself to see that I always had access to the most perfect knowledge of knowing what to do and what to say in each time, place and circumstance through complete relaxation, through relaxing as open intelligence, resting in this great power this great power of just seeing everything exactly as it is. And I began to see that the root cause of my own discomfort, of my own conflict, of my own problems, of my own confusion, was this simple misunderstanding as to the nature of reality. Thinking that my thoughts, emotions and sensations had an independent nature. They were somehow over there or out there and I had to manage them recognizing instead that I could allow them to be as they are. I didn't have to struggle with them. I didn't have to work at them. I didn't have to control them. I could allow them to be as they were. And in that, I began to see that all of this data, and your question there is the perfect example, the frustration of not being able to contribute as much as we would like to contribute, and then feeling terrible about that, for whatever reason. It's the perfect example of this innate desire to be of benefit. That's why I wanted to know whose fault it was that the, the world was the way it was. That's why I wanted to know who was to blame. Because I wanted to do something about it. I wanted the world to be a better place. I wanted to know how I could contribute to that. How do I do that? And actually I had become very disillusioned because I saw that nothing really seemed to change. Going on marches, campaigning against various things, standing up and shouting about things. And I'm not saying any of those things aren't worthwhile and things don't change, but on a fundamental level, the confusion and the conflict and the pain and the suffering in the world actually really remains quite constant. And I began to see, though, on a personal level, that by allowing my data, my experience to be as it was, that data that I'd seemed to have to manage actually became my capacity to be of great benefit by allowing it to be as it was. Rather than being a victim to it, I became a master of the data by allowing it to be this dynamic energy of open intelligence. I began to discover that I could be at peace with myself. And that was the starting point, which in itself was absolutely incredible. But that was the starting point, this mental and emotional stability of seeing that I didn't have to be at war with myself, with my own thoughts and emotions and experiences. One short moment at a time, I could end that war. And so I began to discover that I didn't have to live in constant conflict and struggle with everything that was going on. And I began to see, well, if this is possible for me, me with all of my ideas, all of my beliefs about everything, all of my um, difficulties that I seem to have, if those are opening out, if those are settling, if there's more and more openness in relating, if this is possible for me, then this is really possible for anyone. And I began to then be interested in seeing what, well, what's it like when there's groups of people that are coming together and everybody is taking responsibility for recognizing everything they're thinking and feeling as this dynamic energy of open intelligence. And right here is, a, is an amazing example of that. 
You'll see people from all around the world, different political beliefs, different religious backgrounds, different countries, different social conditioning, and everybody is getting on and getting things done. Everybody has their own particular strengths, gifts and talents that you can contribute and people are good at some things and maybe other people are good at other things but by coming together there is this seamless cooperation where the focus is on the openness of intelligence that we all share not on all of the ideas that we've learned to emphasize that separated us and so I began to recognize that if people coming together can live in this way and if this is possible for me, it's possible for anyone, then this actually has incredible and profound implications for the whole of society, for the whole of our global human society. And this current time in history, there we have this sense of being a global society. You know, we're, we're connected with our, our relatives in Australia or New Zealand or Africa or, you know, we know what's going on in China. And so there is this global human society that more and more it's obvious that we are part of. And so we have this choice. Are we going to continue behaving like we're victims to everything that we think and feel, to everything that's going on in the world, working out who to blame, which is actually just continuing on the way that things have always been going? Or are we going to see how can things fundamentally change? What is the fundamental level of being human? What is, what, what is it that is us at our basic level? And when I stop describing everything, it is this openness of intelligence. That is always there. And every time I rely on it, there is an open-hearted relating. There is an openness of mind that allows me to see what will be of most benefit in each time, place and circumstance. And you begin to see that all data no matter how we've learned to describe them, and seeing how emphasizing them has affected our relationships can suddenly make us think, ah, data, they're, they're the enemy. Actually, by allowing them to be as they are, we recognize that, first of all, they're, they're old and dear friends. The things that we thought we had to get rid of, we can just allow them to be as they are, very gently, very naturally, one short moment at a time. And then as we become more familiar with them, we see we have nothing to avoid or fear anymore. Nothing in our experience that is, that is problematic. We just allow it to be as it is, one short moment. And in that, the data become our power to be of great benefit. Rather than making ourselves a victim for feeling like we're not good enough, we can be gentle with ourselves there seeing that that is simply another expression of our desire to be of benefit, our desire to contribute. And um, that recognition of seeing that that is the case all along, and that has always been the case for everything that I ever did in my life, was this desire to contribute, this desire to make a difference, this desire to bring about a world that I knew was possible. I just didn't know how. And in this training, with the support I've been given, I'm really learning how that is possible. It has to start with me. I, 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 if, if I can't live at peace with myself and everybody else, then how is anything going to change? It has to start with me, but then that very quickly spreads and opens out, and I see how that influences all of the relationships in my life, big or small, intimate or, or just acquaintances, all become this open expanse of pure benefit.